There's no Mr. Yamaha, and there's no Mr. Pearl, but boy, there's a Mr. Ludwig. Hey now, Chief, you know, you know he's up in heaven there with a pair of brushes in his hand because I remember hanging up with the Chief and he always loved to hear some good sweeping. So here's to the Chief. I sat down with the Chief and he was like, so Carlos, what are you doing? I was, well, I drum in this band, Chief Rick. I said, I'm going, I'm going to do a John Lennon session this week. Ah, John Lennon. Yeah, I know that guy that used to drum with him. What's his name? Ringo! Old Bill. Ah, uh, it was great. Well, first of all, he used to love my totally tasteless jokes. First thing he wants to know is, are you a drummer? Are you a percussionist? And thankfully for me, I, I practiced. He was a real guy. And he didn't, he didn't want any phonies around him like that. He was being brought up as a drummer. He had, he had begged to play drums. He became a really good drummer and, and percussionist. He was a teacher. He was a student. He was a philosopher. It's a giant of a man. He had many facets. He, he was so charismatic. He comes in and he sets up this educational kit and he just starts playing away and everybody's just amazed at that. He picks it up, slams it on the floor and bounces a bowling ball off the head of the thing. I have actually known people that had some slight imperfection in a drum when they got it, whether it was a cosmetic or whatever, and could pick up the phone and talk to Bill Ludwig Jr. and he would have another drum in the mail that day. When I bought my, my first drum kit at Frank's Drum Shop in Chicago, I had a few little problems and complaints with it, and my dad said, well, write to the company. A week later, I got a letter back from, with Ludwig letterhead on it, and there was a, a personally typed letter from uh, William F. Ludwig II. He was, always, he was always very kind, very sweet to me, and always a gentleman. He's the reason I played drums. We had a handshake deal. He insisted to be put on paper, I didn't. He gave my father a Ludwig snare drum. His word was as good as anything. He was a patriot. He served his country. Very, very moving to me. The things he did, the way he did it, out of necessity. His lifelong friend, Fred Fennell, he and Dad, would tour the battlefields and play three camps on their rope drums in honor of the fallen boys of that bloody war. Based on the work that we had done with Todd, I went to him and I said, listen, I'm, I'm doing uh, a titanium superphonic. I would love nothing more than to have it as a Ludwig product. I want that snare drum. This would be a perfect way to honor um, a living legend. The Chief. We sat down and we started batting a couple of ideas around. The Drum. And found that picture and took it to an artist and, and who specializes in doing those sculptures. For Christmas. And she did the uh, an actual sculpture um, portrait and that was shrunk down and made into the cast badge that went on it being someone on the sidelines watching this, like I said, this pageant of amazing products and all of a sudden being part of the flow, it was a, uh, you know, it was a pretty, pretty incredible moment. My last meeting with the chief was in uh, uh, the, near the end of December of uh, 2007. Uh, Bill Three said, you know, uh, I think it's good for you to come over and see the chief now. Dad had a stroke. The chief at that particular time could not speak. It was difficult knowing him all my life, knowing what an energetic person he was. But he could cry, and so could I. And uh, we, I told him how important he was to me. I told him that uh, his vision for this company provided a career for me. And it was the chief that actually made that possibility a reality. 
his presence will really be missed. After the chief passed away, there was a there was a time of, okay, we're not sure what we're going to do. About three days before the service, I was talking to Billy, and he said, you know, we're going to do this thing where myself and Jim Catalano and somebody else, we're going to play three camps. That was a piece that we always played, and uh, Senior and Dad and I would always play it on the 4th of July. At the end of the service, we're going to march a cadence out of the church. Would you like to be a part of that? Because it's set up to signal the camps in the Civil War era that everything is okay at the end of the day. And there was a feeling that came over me that was beyond description, really. It was just one of Dad's favorite pieces. It was like, I, I went backwards in time to being a boy and reading the lovely catalogs and seeing their pictures, never dreaming to meet them. I was fine with it until I got to the front of the church at the end of the service and Jim and Bunny Carlos and B3 and a bunch of us were putting the drums on, getting ready to play. And it sort of hit me what I was playing for. And that was the first time I got really choked up. Come back to honor you, fallen heroes of the Republic. 